Welcome back to the Final Fantasy Tactics All Oracles Challenge being recorded here in January of 2022. Today we are heading to the Yardo Fort City and this is a bit of a doozy battle. If you've played this game before, you know this is one of those pesky save someone battles. That means that you have to keep a character on their feet. You don't just have to defeat all enemies, you have to defeat all enemies and not let a certain character hit the ground. And it, it is not a tough character like Agrius back in the Barius Valley. It, note my setup there, that was kind of specific. But it, it's not a tough character like Agrius back in the Barius Valley. It is a squishy character in the person of Rafa, who we are going to meet right here in this little cutscene. Rafa and Malak, the uh, brother and sister combo, coming from the really, really unfortunate situation being raised by Barrington. Barrington it's pretty explicitly abuses uh, both of them, particularly Rafa, in pretty disturbing ways uh, because he wants to exploit their magical powers. They, they were both born with uh, family magical powers, although they're pretty terrible <laughs> in, in, uh, in battle, as, as we'll see from, from both of them. So here's Rafa, who says, help me. Now, this was against Malak, who, who does basically nothing. But the problem is you've got three ninjas and two summoners on the other side. So you've got both casters and uh, the scariest physical characters we have seen so far. Now, Rafa is always going to start here, and she's going to start within throwing range of two ninjas. If they both hit her, it's a lot harder to keep her on her feet. She does have a mantle on, so she can dodge some things, as you see right there. She dodged that shuriken right there. The third ninja is too far back to be able to get into position to throw to her. And I noticed that uh, that third ninja, in all of my attempts and setups of this battle, always moved to that tile and then just waited. Now, Rafa dodged one, and now she's going to get out of the way. She's going to try to cast her Heaven Fire or whatever it is. It's a uh, weird spell that targets... Uh, it targets the tiles like a uh, black magic spell or white magic spell, but it randomly attacks uh, tiles in the uh, in the area. So putting Dorothy right there was also explicitly for um, Rafa, because I knew Rafa was going to charge her heaven fire and then move there. So Dorothy was in place to go up and, and heal her with the heal staff right away. Everyone else is, uh, the other three characters, Ramza and the other two are back in the corner. They're just gonna wait till the ninjas bring themselves out this other oracle over here is going to try to get into range here soon to start to paralyze the ninjas and or silence the summoners. So this is a way to also kind of keep everybody separated so that the summoners can't do too much. She's also going to be kind of a bait. The first summoner is going to uh, come over here and she's going to charge a summon on this single oracle over here rather than come if I brought everybody towards that wall the first summon would hit multiple characters as it did. I did a first couple of uh, setup attempts at this one. Um, so here she is just seeing what she can charge. She's going to take a summon. She pretty much knows that. And she's just hoping that uh, she can stay alive. So here is the Heaven Fire. And actually, it's interesting. It hit three times. Yes, four times. So that was the that was a really really good outcome. She was targeting all those tiles, but it it does a random amount of attacks and a random assortment of tiles that it's targeting. Now a lot of that damage that it's done will be erased by Moogles from these summoners, but this summoner instead of going for a double Moogle over here, she goes for this. Now here's Malak's Hellfire or whatever it is. So it's going to target the blank tiles around Rafa. It has a chance to hit her, but it looks like it has only so far. Yeah, it only hit the tiles around her, so she got lucky there. We got lucky in hitting a few different characters a couple times, but uh, Rafa got lucky in uh, in only and in, in totally dodging it. So here she is casting. Uh, that's paralyzed. So if we can don't act this ninja, we'll be in good shape. And Malak can be don't acted as well. Yeah, so Malak and the ninja are both don't act. Malak is not very dangerous, not nearly as dangerous as the ninjas, but it's nice to have him in don't act status. Here comes a Shiva, and this is going to hit for a lot. You'll see this is going to do 100 and something damage to her. And now my thought on here was that I would be able to get her uh, silenced or, or paralyzed with, uh, with this oracle once she was drawn down here. That was the thinking with this one, so that I would only take one big summon. Now, Rafa is, uh, she's she's in range of the Shurukens again. Unfortunate, but that's okay. But now a ninja has been drawn out. So that ninja is now by himself, and he's out here 
for uh, for us to start targeting. Ninjas have a ton of offense. They can throw things. I think four tiles they can throw. They have two swords. So these guys have like some of them have a, a knife and a, a flail. Some of them have two knives. I didn't really look at their equipment too closely on this one because uh, it almost doesn't matter. They, they are pretty uh, pretty sturdy. Although equipment does matter, as we'll see in a little bit for the summoners. We'll see that later. Um, so I'm trying to maximize my speed here because the ninjas are so fast. So I'm trying not to. I'm trying to economize my actions so that uh, I'm using waiting. Like if there's not something really useful I can do, if something's only marginally useful, I, I will sometimes forego doing something marginally useful for waiting so that I can try to get an action faster before the ninjas have too much. Also, I don't want to leave too many characters charging around the ninjas because they can just run up and double swing at you. So that's why in, in an early setup of this one, I used blind a little bit on the ninjas. Uh, and let me tell you how blind works. It doesn't work quite the way I thought it did and maybe not the way you're thinking it does. So blind doesn't really lower enemies accuracy what it does is it it increases or doubles your evasion but if your evasion is zero it helps you none so for situations where your evasion is already zero blind won't help you at all which is not how i thought it works but when i looked it up that's how it does work so uh charging with an oracle here the ninjas if they are blinded will uh, be able to just come up and still hit you for full accuracy as i learned painfully in a s earlier setup of this fight so uh, we really aren't really using blind so much on the ninjas because they still have a chance to hit you and don't act they have no chance to damage you. That's what I'm really going for here. Um, because it, blind just didn't seem to do quite as much as I thought. But I did try it and it is effective. So it is does make it harder because we have the elf capes on or the elf mantles. So uh, we can dodge things a little bit better. So there's an 80% chance to silence on that summoner, so that's what I was hoping to get right there. So yeah, if they throw things at you, you can dodge it better, and it doubles your evasion from the mantles. It makes them more effective. So your your better equipment uh, actually makes blind better, but uh, they could still come up to you and swing two knives at you with a 50% chance to hit, which, you know, I'd rather have them a 0% chance. So that summoner is silenced, and that ninja, I believe, is silenced. Yes, that ninja is silenced, so no casting from that ninja. So we've got two don't acts and two silences right there. We're actually in okay shape. This is what this battle really required. Now, this ninja is going to come up here, and he's going to take a couple of chops, and he's going to get her with both of them. So we're in a little bit of a hit point dilemma right there. We, we've got to get some, some HP back for these guys. This summoner can't cast anything. She's just going to move over here and wait. Uh, and that's a good thing because if that silence hadn't landed, I probably would have re-rolled this battle because that summoner would have come up and hit two, maybe three of my characters on the uh, on the side of the battle there. And so Ramza finishes that ninja right there with the uh, with the rod. Uh, if this is Dorothy, Dorothy will need to probably come over and do some heal staff soon on my other my other character. Drain life is really important for keeping your hit points up. But the heal staff is there to kind of supplement. So this is not Dorothy's turn. Uh, and yeah, Moogle is coming from that other summoner. So the ninja, the ninjas back there that got hit with the heaven, heaven fire are going to be uh, healed back closer to their to their max hit points. But that's okay. We are happy that we can just kind of take them on one at a time. That's one strength that the oracles do have is that you can kind of control or you have some control how many enemies you're facing at a time. Because if you debilitate them, enemies tend to just retreat. So, you know, if I cast Stone Act on a ninja, the next couple of actions that ninja takes are going to be going away from us. And then when Don't Act is healed, it'll take that ninja an action or two to get back into firing range for us. But we do have to, we can't dawdle around too long, as you'll see. You know, we had to deal with that ninja down here. We had to get that ninja uh, on the floor while we had the opportunity. And then now we have to create another opportunity to uh, to keep everybody safe because here comes Moogle. So those guys back there, and, and soon the don't acts and the silences are gonna be expiring. So that other ninja and Malak are gonna be out of don't act status fairly soonish. And so we, we have to maximize our opportunities. So Dorothy is all the way over here. And sadly, we can't quite move into Dorothy's um, heal staff range by ourselves. That's what you saw me check to see where Dorothy was standing with the heal staff. 
So I can't move directly into her range. So I'm trying to figure out where I can put shields. I know shields this, this weak um, oracle is not going to be able to act this turn. But I want to see where can I put her where she'll be safe. And that Dorothy can still get to her with the heal staff. Because taking a double swing from that ninja was pretty rough. And this ninja is silenced but is still viable. And so now this ninja is going to throw a diamond sword. Which is a pretty awesome throw right there at my at my oracle that's a pretty great throw right there i have to say but now that oracle is in critical so that if that oracle goes down this this battle will be a reset because we just can't take out all those characters that quickly now i moved dorothy here i probably should have moved her in front but as you'll see it ends up being okay i probably should have moved her between the ninja in case the ninja got another action uh then the ninja would have to move to get to throw to her. Not that the ninja would have a problem doing that. I think the ninja could have moved to a spot to still hit her if the ninja decided that uh, going after the weakest character was the way to go. So life drain hits, and now I really need life drain to uh, hit from my weak character there. I really need her to land a, a, a life drain. So that ninja is in defend. I believe that means that his don't act is has expired because he's defending. Okay, so she's got a good chance to hit. She's just checking on when he's going to go, when he's going to get a turn. And because she doesn't want to be standing in his range charging. That's the, you know, that's the tricky part. She's actually going to retreat behind this tree. She picked up 40 from the heal staff. I think it was 40. Um, and now she's going to go after 50 from the, uh, from the life drain. So she can be back in this battle uh, pretty quickly. And the heal staff really was critical for that. Because heal staff doesn't really rely on percentages uh, rolling in your favor. So Ramza is going to go for a life drain. He's looking at it, but he's got terrible uh, affinity. So 43% life drain. And, but the problem is that if one spell has got low chance to hit, all the spells are going to have low chance to hit. So uh, he, it looks like he just chose to end up go f going for the life drain anyway. Even with his, uh, his affinity. Because Paralyze would, would be low, Sleep would be low, everything is low. It's all proportional to how accurate the spell is by itself, but that penalty gets applied equally across. And if you played this game before, you know that already. But. So here comes the ninja, and he's going to go after, yeah, so this charging character right there. So you notice that uh, the mantle does not help her evasion when she's charging. And so that's why blind does didn't work quite as nicely, is that the ninjas would just exploit any character who was charging while they were blinded. Because the uh, the mantle, you know, you're, you're very vulnerable while you're charging. And so he got a critical hit also on her, unfortunately. Okay, so, but there's that, that oracle there who was weak, who took two swings from the other ninja. She got hers to land. And let's see if Ramza's going to get his. Well, no, yeah. Ramza got his because we saw the, the hurt animation. Now, this oracle was also charging one. It's going to miss. It's going to fail because uh, he was on the ground. And now I'm looking over here. And check this out. So I've got, I'm looking at the summoner. And I, I'm within four tiles. I'm checking to see when Silence Song will go. And I am within four tiles of, I said five tiles of the summoner. Which means I can target the four tile spell and, and get her in the uh, area of effect. But as it happens, what I should have done before I charge this Silence Spell. Which we're, you're just going to see the Silence Spell. I should have checked uh, what her equipment was. Because later on, we will see that she has a magic ring, which makes her immune to silence. So, silence was the wrong choice right here, because I had zero chance to hit, although I did not know it at the time. So, the, the ring there uh, took, care of, took care of that. But, oh well. Okay, so I'm having Dorothy move over, and here's Dorothy again with the supplemental healing with the heal staff. And again, just coming in handy, and Rafa is just hanging out there defending. So we did successfully kind of castle her in, in chess terms. Um, we got her behind us. So we, we did well there. Now, Malik is charging. He's just charging up to the front and uh, charging a spell. So this could be a good opportunity to take him out. Unfortunately, we don't have the kind of movement that the ninjas do, uh, especially because we're ha we have mantles instead of boots in this current situation. We can't quite easily get, get in there to pile on the damage on Malak while he's charging. 
And look at the terrible affiliation there. I think Malak's faith is really low. I think that's kind of a story element thing. I think he... He has... Yeah, the, so the ninja has 70 faith, I guess. I was just looking at the ninja. So that's quite high faith, that ninja that's down there. And so here, here's, here's her checking again. She just has terrible... Uh, terrible chances to land. 30%. 27%. And I'm just checking those, and she's going to go for it. She only has a, you know, one in four chance to land it, but um, she's going to go for it because it's something she can do. Now, I did talk about economy of actions before, but at this point in the battle, we do have to be a little bit urgent now that we have the threat of the summoners uh, coming coming down to us is, uh, is more present because I missed that silence, not knowing that I should have cast it don't act instead of silence, instead of paralyze instead of don't, uh, instead of silence. But so that's my thinking at this point is that I've got a summoner who soon is going to come down and start to uh, cause some trouble for us. That uh, I, I need to keep everybody spread out because here it comes. And summon spells, their ch their charge time is, is pretty short. So generally a summoner can get down there and they can hit your guys without, uh, without you getting a chance to move out of the way or, or silence them or do anything to them while they're charging. But right here, she can target this ninja, but you notice that because the ninjas have such low HP pools, our drain life doesn't give us very much health back. And so this summon uh, is gonna do a pretty decent amount of damage and we can't really recover a ton of it back because those ninjas are so squishy. <laughs> so that becomes an issue. Of course, that makes the ninjas much easier to take out with a couple of rod um, hits or stick hits. So predictably, the life drain misses because it was only a 27% chance to land, but had to go for it. And she's hoping she can hit this ninja, and right there we miss. So there's kind of two misses in a row there. Kind of unfortunate, but oh well. This ninja's going to draw himself right up on in here. Now, this is not an overall a bad thing because she's not charging, so she was able to dodge one. That Hellfire, by the way, that uh, Malak was charging, or, or Dark Sword or whatever it was, uh, I moved out of that tile. I, I didn't mention that before. He had targeted it with only one of my characters in the tiles, and that character got a turn. So that's why I moved that summoner by one tile there, the one that's right by the tree. I moved her one tile over just to get her out of that space. So Malak's attack was, uh, was doomed to fail right there. But so now the ninja has brought himself up and are, we were able to dodge one of his attacks. He only did, what, 18 damage or whatever to that uh, to that one. And now look at this. This is where I see, oh, it's interesting, 0% to hit that summoner. And here's where I check it out. Magic ring right there. And I'm even uh, demonstrating right here. Cancels, silence, and berserk. So um, that is why my silence missed before. And that's why I should have checked earlier what her equipment was because I could have done this instead of casting a 0% silence I can cast a 71% uh, don't act paralyze now I have to be careful not to move into the attack radius of that heaven fire because it will hit your characters I believe so I need to note that when I move her if she wants to attack the ninja but I think that might be Dorothy who has a turn let me see yeah that is Dorothy so Dorothy's not going to be moving in to attack anybody She's going to be moving over to uh, swing the heel staff, I believe. Yeah, and again, so the heel staff healing, you know, nearly one whole character's uh, worth of hit points. You know, one one whole life is, uh, is coming in quite handy. So the 71% don't act, unfortunately, does not uh, land on the summoner. And so Malak can now get in here and he's going to go for a, um, he's got the Goku rod as well. Now, that could have been tricky because he could have applied innocent status to us, and that would have actually been pretty pretty tough. We we could have dealt with it because right now we're not doing a ton of casting. We're doing a lot of bashing with our with our stuff. So if that was that was Dorothy anyway. So she would have just been probably bashing with the heel staff. And so there's 80 to the ninja. Now, Rams is going to look to see what he can do to this ninja. But I don't know if I want to have him move to the back. He might check his damage um, first before he moves. There you go, Ramza. Check your damage. And it looks like he's good to hit from right here. This ninja must have a movement item or something on. There's no um, no mantle or anything on from that ninja. And so now I don't know if I want Ramza to move or if I want him to wait and economize his, his actions. 
It looks like he does end up moving. Probably to just get a tiny bit farther from the summoners. Um, but, but we're getting dangerously close to being more grouped up, I guess. So that's not the greatest, greatest. But we're so close here. I, I'm just... This is a... I'm at an edge here as I'm recording... As I was recording this because we've got, you know, two ninjas down, one ninja almost down. We're trying to keep everybody, you know, full health or as close to full health as we can on their feet so that the summoners can't come over and, and kind of get a cheap shot on somebody. I was really hoping to land one of the one of those paralyzes on these summoners. Um, so, but look at that; she's got really terrible affinity with the with the one summoner. But um, the other one is a little better. So, if I can target both of them, I don't know why I was looking at silent yeah silent song right there. So, if she could target both of them, uh, she might be able to land it on at least one. And so she is going to wait down there. Uh, the ninja is going to use an item on himself because this is a ninja with item. So he didn't move over there to attack the charging character because he couldn't get access to her because there's not a square there uh, in front of her. I think that's if he wouldn't move there, but also he was really weak. So now Rafa is targeting the squares around Malak there with her own heaven fire or whatever it is. So she's, she's doing okay. Now, this summoner is targeting a Moogle, so having these guys weak was, was overall a positive thing. Now, she was the better summoner to target with that don't act, so it's unfortunate that she got a turn to move out, because I think I just have a 35% chance to land that other one. Um, now, this is kind of curious right here. So, the Heaven Fire goes off, then this don't act spell gets cast, and it actually lands. That was only, you know, one in three chance to land. And then... Malak, maybe on his turn or something, if he's critical, he will say that and teleport away. But anyway, actually, Rafa ended up <laughs> delivering the uh, quote-unquote final hit to uh, to Malak. Now, she can't move closer to the battle, as, as close to the battle as she wants to, because she can only move three tiles, and she has two friendly characters, and then one on-the-ground enemy character on her third tile away. Um... Well, no, I guess, sorry, it's it's friendly care. It's all friendly characters. So she can just move one tile closer to the to the battle here. And I really want her to be able to contribute, but she just cannot quite get there. She's five tiles away. And um, the five the five tiles away is... Uh, uh, sorry, the, the four tiles away right next to the summoner is too high. She can't target on the level of that summoner. So she, there's just not a way she can target uh, the summoner from where she is. So, because of that wall. But now she can target both of these summoners. And so we're looking at what Life Drain can do. And I'm going to do the higher one. Because we just we, we want to pick up some hit points here. And again, these squishy guys, it's a little bit uh, unfortunate we can't get more. But squishy is as uh, squishy does. But now it can move some characters out and around. The uh, the ninja is going to get a, get an action here. But I can target even from back here. Unfortunately, she doesn't have a, a good shot at the at the other one. She doesn't have a good good percent to land. That other one might just have kind of lower faith, I guess. It's just harder to land stuff on her. But again, we've talked about economizing your your actions. I don't want her to just kind of throw something randomly around. But you know, I want to do something useful, and I need to decide if it's worth her moving if it's worth the ct penalty for her moving i do get some mp from it uh, i should mention also the reason i'm getting such low mp you may have noticed is because i have the um the the better hp rewarding gear on right now so i have the power sleeve or whatever it is that gives you uh, more hit points but but not so many magic points or, or no M mp i guess so that summoner who is silenced took a swing with her staff at my, at my character. So that is a, a handy thing that silence will do is uh, silence or, or innocent on these guys will make them, they'll make them come up to you because they will try to do something worthwhile and they will then just like, okay, I'm going to come up and do a physical attack with my stick, which is like the last thing that they should be doing because now look where she is. She's like, she's right in range of all of our attacks. So Ramza can come up. He's actually going to go over to the side of this ninja. Probably a smart idea here uh, and finish the ninja off because I don't want that ninja to come over and hit a charging character. Now we just we have a crystal right there. So we, we want that out of, the, out of here so that uh, we can't have anybody hit, restoring themselves. But look at all that. All that hit points and all that MP. She is like fully back on her feet again. 
and now she has uh, she has a chance to land a big life drain for uh, for the finisher here. So that was really really big actually. She got a full HP boost, full MP boost, denied the crystal to the enemy. Although the enemy couldn't have gotten there easily, she'd have had to go around all of our characters. Now we've just got the one summoner back there, and we just have to not mess this up. We have to just chase this summoner down. <laughs> Basically, now Dorothy, remember, has the heal staff, so she happens to be the the front character. So it's going to be up to her. She has to get up here. Now that uh, summoner has don't act on, so the summoner can't do anything at least for now. We have a couple of rounds, a round or two, I guess, maybe before don't act will expire. So it's all about either landing enough of the drains or getting within stick range of her. But you can see just uh, how comical it is to have us trying to chase down a character who's not coming towards us. Normally these oracles kind of sit back and let, let the other characters come to them. So there's Don't Act expiring, but I'm charging another Don't Act on her right now. So that timed out really well. I'd like to say that that was on purpose and just really high, highly skilled game mechanic knowledge, but uh, sadly it was not. It was just luck. I just thought, it's been a while since we put Don't Act on her. Let's try again. And here I'm between, should I just try another life drain? And I am going to, it looks like, just try another life drain. Here's Ramza. Now Ramza, we have such a bottleneck right there in the gate area. Um, so I don't know, I'm imagining that she's gonna run to this corner. So here is my little prediction here with Ramza. You see Ramza kind of move, moving over to this side. Because I'm predicting that that's the side she's gonna go to and that maybe I can plug her with a spell once she starts to move over that way because she's she's two moves away from getting into that far corner around that building so in one move ramza might still be able to move up to the wall and be able to snipe her from behind the wall with with a spell that's the thinking anyway that's the thinking so now i'm gonna have all my oracles just kind of trying to chase her down trying to get within stick range to uh to deliver the uh the last hit so she is moving that direction, and as I said before, she's she's two moves away from that corner. Maybe even another one. Uh, one, two, three. Yeah. So she in the next move she can move into the corner, but I think she might be in range of Ramza. Now she has the same range as my uh, as my Oracle. She has a movement of three, and my Oracles also have three. So uh, I will not be able to actually gain any ground on her until she moves less than her full amount, if that makes sense. So she moved three tiles away. And my oracles had to move three tiles to stay three tiles away from her. That's because that's just how math works. So she's on her way to that corner. And so then, then I can actually gain ground on her once she gets into the corner. But until then, I've got to just do this same move again. Where I'm, you know, moving as far as we can, as close as we can to her. Keeping everybody bunched up. And just trying to land these, you know, land things on her as best I can. Now a Petrify would, and this is Silence again, so you can see Silence, she's the one with the with the magic ring. So Petrify would end the battle if I could land Petrify, but it's kind of it's, it's a low chance, and she's got and I think she's got pretty low faith, so it's hard to hard to land, so we'll see if I can get enough of these life drains, and then finally a stick hit probably uh, would would be nice if I can get in range after she moves. That'll be fine. Here's Petrify to see if it will end. Nope, Petrify misses. That's what she went for. And Ramza's gonna try it because he's he's still five tiles away. So he had to target uh, the sleep on her like this. And now I can actually get up into range because she's not gonna move on me now. But you'll notice if I do HP damage to her, she'll wake up. And so what I'm looking at here with Dorothy, because Dorothy has the heal staff, she can't just step up and hit her with the rod. Um, we're going to charge Paralyze. And then we'll take a look and see what a rod will do here. Um, she's sleeping. She's weak. Let's see if this is enough to uh, do it. It's actually not quite enough to do it. And there's Don't Act it has expired on her, so that's funny. So sleep didn't really last long because I kind of sacrificed sleep. I could have moved other characters up there, but it doesn't really matter much at this juncture. Even if she tried to get a summon off now, we've all 
got pretty full health or closer to full health that we would be able to finish her off before anybody turned into a crystal. So it's not a huge area of concern for us. There it is for the win. So, woo, Rafa has been saved and protected. Everybody's on their feet. This one was a fun one to do. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment, or hit me up on Twitter where I'm also active, underscore ATE. We will see you in the next battle.